Yipperuni, hope you are well. Today marks the start of a new series, putting together the knowledge from the No Mechanics Road to GC and ones and twos, and all of the stuff from the Rocket League Mastery course to see how we can get through each rank bracket. Now, before I continue, I just want to say we have a free Rocket League course on this YouTube channel that you may not know about if you are new. The course is built to build a player's skills in a layered manner so that they can slowly improve with training packs, quizzes, example tutorials, and everything else you need to improve. Each new skill is a belt like a martial arts system. You complete the training pack, all the requirements, share it in the Discord, and you get given a belt as a role. And if you do the full course, you get an e-certificate. So if you didn't know about that, go check that out. And completing that will massively improve you as we have already had people not even 20% of the way through in that are hitting massive rank peaks but anyway back to this series and a lot of the standards we use in the mastery course will be featured in this so this series will be broken down into 1v1 and then 2v2 because they're slightly different and it's not going to necessarily be all about mechanics we're going to be covering strategy and positioning too let's look at 1v1 in gold rank defensive Defensively for gold, you must consider that your opponent's offense will not be world class and therefore the defense can be what we call in basketball sagged off. There is no need to put yourself into a position where you can have a ball 50-50 through you, nor do we want a challenge that could make a difficult recovery. Therefore, our focus will be on shadowing, and this is the first key skill. Our standard for gold is to be able to completely understand the shadow defense video and to get 100% in one attempt on the pack. At that level, we should be able to stop most offense that comes our way, but it doesn't end there. We need to make ourselves an outside presence to funnel the player into the far post. And as they do that, we're just going to shadow across and continually block their shooting angle. That way we can take the ball's momentum back around and start to create our offense. Fakes is the secondary key skill on defense. Using fakes in gold is unreal. It's probably the biggest rank destroyer at that level, as many players are very tense. So fakes work really well, and a successful fake takes a curved line to make it look realistic from the opponent's view. The reason for this is they see your name plate coming at the ball and then it disappears whilst you are progressing at the ball. Therefore, they really believe the challenge is coming in and they overreact. Most times they won't actually get contact on the ball in gold, but if they did, it doesn't really matter. By doing the fake in the correct manner, we should be safe. And again, guys, look at the video completely understand it. Link is in the top and in the description below. Make sure you get that down as well. Where the ball is coming right at you or across your path, instead of dodging into it defensively, just focus for now on tapping single jump and that's it. Just single jump everything to get a block, but keep your car in a solid fundamental position. The reason we want to do this is because many people flick wrong and they find it very hard to recover from a flick. And if you mistime it, you're going to be out of the position. So we just want a single jump for now. Offense. In gold 1v1, the biggest advantage comes from the player who can manipulate the ball in a greater fashion on the ground. But to manipulate the ball is not always to try to progress the ball. Being patient, especially when in the opponent's corner, is an especially important skill as a challenge could end up in an insta goal. Having understanding of popping the ball is extremely important as jabs into the ball that give the ball lift are what will give you multiple offensive wins and that leads to our first offensive key skill, the hook shot. This is the first skill we need as it trains multiple things at once, pushing the ball as opposed to carrying it as it's much safer. This will also help train your ability to move the ball from side to side on the ground, which can make players miss the ball when timed correctly. Understanding angles of connection, where we can get lift on the ball and put it on target. And it also trains us to stay more grounded. If you get space and time, a lateral dribble hook shot is a fantastic skill to have. It creates that understanding of how to hit the ball when it's rolling to make it difficult. The standard for this is to use the pink belt system until you can complete the hookshot pack with 100% success in one run through of it. The next key skill is the low 50 and this is vitally important. 
In situations you won't be able to get a lateral dribble or you don't have the ball rolling in a way that allows you to do a safe pop. In these situations, getting a solid hitbox on the ball with the nose or if the opponent looks like they're coming in from a strong position themselves at a lot of speed, you can turn and use the side of your car whilst doing a single jump, both with the nose or with the side, whichever one you're up for, you have to do the single jump. This will prevent the ball going through you, which can end up in free goals. So therefore, full understanding of the 50-50 system is vital. Now let's talk strategy. From a strategic standpoint, our goal is to primarily block the front post and not panic with our opponent's offense as it will not have been crafted yet. We want to stay central and get good at grabbing the little pads. Often players take themselves out of position to secure the big pads, which is completely unneeded. So the training for development to get through gold is defensively get the shadow belt, which is the silver belt, and get the fakes belt, that's amethyst. From an offensive standpoint, get the hookshot belt, which is pink, and the 50-50 belt, which is dark gray. Even once you have the belts, continue to do these daily as warm-ups before you go into a game until you get through to platinum. The other thing you must do is play 10 1v1 games every day, focusing on not actually challenging the ball, but instead doing lots of fakes and protecting the front post. Even if you begin to lose at first, you will have a breakthrough, and it should allow you to just smoothly glide up the ranks. 2v2. Defense. Defensively for gold in twos, it's all about that front post position. The idea is that your teammate will force them to the outside and you can just sit at the front post and wait for the ball to come to you. Make sure you are active in this position and try to prevent the ball coming across if you know the defender is waiting to put it in. First man, do we challenge? Well, this is a huge misconception. The goal isn't to just challenge. It's to force the opponent with the ball to make a play so that it goes to your second man and you get possession as a team. So as for the first man, we can challenge if we think we have a stronger central position and hitbox on the ball so that even if we do lose the 50, which we are expecting to win, we force it around the outside to our teammate who, by the way, should be waiting at the front post. Just because it's coming around the outside doesn't mean you have to go and meet it. Wait for the ball to come to you. It will give you more time, more options, and it will force the opponents back more because they won't expect you to do that. Now, speaking of 50-50s, to help increase our chances of this, it's really important that we jump to the middle of the ball's hitbox in height to prevent the ball bouncing all around if they do win. We want it to be dead, the ball, so that it makes it easier to control for your teammate. So as the first man, if you're not 100% confident, just fake. And personally, I prefer to fake as the first man if you are against a player that has the ball under control as it's really risky to dive in. So fake and let your teammate take. Fake and take. And always back your teammate up. If you accidentally get stripped or overcommit, get back on defense. As a second man, if you're left alone, just be super patient. Shadow, shadow, shadow. As the second man to waste time and let your teammate come back and support you. If they are rotating, they should be looking to come around to the back post, the opposite side to which you are on. This is how teamwork works. As you're on the ball, they go around the back so that if you get beat, it gives them the most time to respond and get into a good position to get outward pressure. And it also gives you more time to get back and support. It's constant movement to support each other. And as soon as you see your teammate coming back around the back post, you go to the ball from the front post to block any shots to the front post. Offense. In goal 2v2, similar to 1v1, the biggest advantage comes from the player who can manipulate the ball in the greater fashion on the ground. Remember, we are looking for outplays, not instant goals. Outplays. We want to create open nets for ourselves, so let us look at methods used throughout the No Mechanics Road to GC. Well, the offense was identical to the 1v1 series, which was understanding of popping the ball or hitting it to the side around the player challenging, not dodging into the ball so much. This is something I notice people do a lot and it throws them out of control. Just single jump and push and jab into the ball. So exactly the same belt system as previously mentioned for gold 1v1 offense, which is the hook shot and 50-50. Having an understanding of popping the ball is extremely important as jabs into the ball can give lift to the ball, which can give you multiple offensive wins because people just dive in. Strategy. From a strategic standpoint, our goal is to stay central focusing on the boost pathing lanes and backing our teammate up. I cannot stress this enough. If you see your teammate on the ball or going to the ball, back off. Let them take it. Stay behind them central. Do not press 
There is literally no need. Even if your teammate has the ball in gold, do not press downfield. Back them up instead. It's much safer and the chances of you redirecting their pass is slim anyway. So just back them up. Get open nets. Force the outplay. Remember to force the ball outside. Use lots and lots of fakes from the middle position to scare your opponent. Your goal is to get them to overcommit so that they go past you and you can just push it into the net. In situations you have the ball rolling at you, use little pops to push the ball up into the air. Learn to tap drift when you do little turns to turn sharply. Not holding it, tapping it, a quick tap. So the training for improvement for 2v2 gold is defense, shadow belt, get the shadow belt, which is silver, get the fakes belt, which is amethyst, and then offense, get the hookshot belt, which is pink, and get the 50-50 belt, which is dark gray, and then continue to play 10 2v2 games every day, focusing on not challenging and protecting the front post instead and backing your teammate up. And even if you lose at first, you will start to get used to rotating. This is an extremely important skill and underutilized. So there you have it. I'm really hoping that this helps people get up the ranks as smoothly as possible. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you like the idea of this series. I'm not sure these videos do take a while to edit and, and do all the scripting for. So hopefully I can try and get these out every week or two. But I really do appreciate it, all the support I've had. Thank you so much, everybody. Look after yourself. Have a nice life and peace out. Peace.